If I told you right now, you have two minutes before a large earthquake, what would you do? <laughs> so the big question I get asked almost daily is, when is the big one gonna happen? Tell us when exactly. It could be today, tomorrow, or 100 years from now. But our uncertainties are so large that we can't pinpoint it, but there's 100% chance that we'll have an earthquake today. Every day, we have at least 30 earthquakes just here in Southern California every single day. Okay, so if we look at the bigger earthquakes, because that's what most people are more concerned with, if we look at the last about seven large earthquakes on the San Andreas Fault, we would have earthquake, wait about 180 years, earthquake, wait about 180 years, earthquake, wait about 180 years, etc. And the last earthquake, boom, was about 300 years ago. So that's much larger than the 180 that we're expecting. Are we concerned about it? Whoa, we're 100 years overdue. No, I think it's a call to action to say, sure, we know there's gonna be a large earthquake on the San Andreas Fault. So let's go in and look at that area in detail and try to scratch our heads and say, well, what could we be missing? So when a large earthquake occurs, it's gonna shake the earth like a bell. And the seismic waves are gonna start where the earthquake was. And it's gonna go around the world once, twice, three times, and depending how big the earthquake was, it's gonna keep going and we can keep measuring that. And that's gonna tell us a lot about what's inside the earth. The other thing we can do is we can say, let's have a plan of action. So if we have some kind of lead time saying that, ooh, we think a large earthquake is gonna occur, we think it's gonna be in this region, what are we gonna do? Some of the obvious things. We can slow down fast trains, we can alert hospitals to take precautionary measures, and we can alert um, gas and electric. So as much as we can mitigate earthquakes, as much as we can understand earthquakes, and as much as we can have earthquake early warning systems or tsunami warning systems in place, I think everybody in the world will benefit. For a typical earthquake, we're gonna have three main seismic phases. The first one is the P wave, and it goes really, really fast. It's always the first, nobody can beat it. The second one is the S wave, and then the larger one is the surface wave, and that's the one that's typically the most damaging. If you're in San Diego, a P wave will get to Disneyland in 25 seconds, 25 seconds. An S wave about 40 seconds and surface waves less than a minute. Everything is a matter of how fast it takes to get information from one location to information from another location. The seismometers record something, they send that to the seismologist. The seismologist have some kind of automated routine that say, ooh, big earthquake, and that's pushed out to, for example, the BART train operators, and the BART train is slowed down. So that's in place today. What's really moving the science forward in my mind right now is the multidisciplinary um, ability for people from different disciplines to come together and work well. And what does Scripps have? We have a program here, uh, it's the Greens Foundation. And that purpose of that is to bring people from different disciplines together in one spot to basically have a think tank, together in one room, maybe to look at those visualizations and to have the conversations for the people outside of the discipline to look and say, what's that thing? And what's that thing is really gonna take us to the next level. So I'm encouraging the science, scientists out there, in fact, anybody, to just question, what's that wiggle? What's going on? Ask the questions. If I told you right now, you have two minutes before a large earthquake, what would you do? You'd probably get out your phone and tweet it, right? We're actually encouraging people to tweet it. The USGS has this new program where they're actually using the tweets of earthquakes in multiple languages to see if there's some earthquake at some location um, that we didn't necessarily know about. And we're finding that some of the tweets that identify the earthquake are pointing out the information um, twice as fast as what our seismometers are doing. And the reason for that is that we have people all over the earth. We do have seismometers all over the earth, but not to the extent of the people. So as a seismologist, what do I do when I feel an earthquake? Maybe a decade ago, I would check the data, I would call my friends, I would confirm some things. Now I want to be the first one to tweet it. <laughs> so if you ever feel an earthquake, you definitely want to get on and tweet it. Make sure you spell correctly. <laughs> Hashtag earthquake will work, whatever you think.